Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to lay out the case uh, why Alex Karp is a very, very good CEO for Palantir and anyone who doesn't think that way is an idiot and doesn't understand Palantir. I'm sorry to say it like this, but somehow there's an ongoing conversation in the Palantir community about if Alex Karp is a good CEO, if the company should be divided into two and Alex Karp should be the head of the government and somebody else should be um, the commercial because Karp doesn't know what he's doing and he's a bad CEO. And I actually was planning to make a video about this and then this piece of Jam uh, podcast came out which is done by guys that I really like and respect and I mostly agree with what they're saying. Uh, but just on this point I want to show what they are saying because believe it or not whatever the guys here are saying about Alex Karp is I know it's in the head of a lot of Palantir investors. So I want to see what they're saying, I want to react to it a little bit and then I want to give you my points of... Uh, why Alex Karp is the exact right person uh, for Palantir. So if you like this, all I ask is that you like and subscribe to the channel and let's go. Put on that. Carlos, that hey, here's a simple question. When you look at Elon Musk, just as a business person, forget about Tesla for a second, just as a business person, would you invest with, if you had A or B, Karp or, or Elon, the next business that he starts, who do you invest with? Oh, of course. No, Elon. I'm asking a mid. Oh, for me, it's a no-brainer. Well, I, 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 would, I would obviously invest in Elon, but I think that analogy makes no sense. Of course it does. Make so this is a very, very stupid question because I believe that uh, companies are, you know, certain companies and certain missions need certain types of individuals. And just because somebody was a good CEO at one place doesn't mean that they are going to be a good CEO in another place. And it's also like taking the world's best CEO and then saying like, okay, uh, if you can take the world's best CEO, would you take him or another guy who's maybe in the top 10? So obviously everybody would choose, this is not even relevant. And for example, take a look at Jeff Bezos. He was the guy who got Amazon to where it is. He created a two trillion or whatever uh, market cap company. There is like three of those on the planet today. And then he sucks as the CEO of Blue Origin, which is way behind SpaceX, despite that they started before. Is because that is not his expertise. He's not good at that. So it doesn't mean that just because somebody is a good CEO for uh, one company, they're going to be excellent CEO for another company. So very stupid point. Hey, hey, oh, if I was given Elon Badri from Enphase or, uh, or, or, or Carp, I would obviously Elon is first. If I'm not allowed to go with Daddy, Elon, I, I go I with Badri then. You don't I like Badri. I, I say forget it. But it's like, it's like the, you don't have to like Carp to just not think he's. No, I get he's, it. I get it. I've heard your, your money. I've heard your bear case on Carp, but. Now it, it every time you guys he's not good with money. Honest. He's not a good businessman. No, uh, Do you sure. trust you? Okay, you would admit that, again, that he's not a good businessman. I, I, again, I it. honestly it. think you guys sound ideological and incredibly dogmatic every time your bear case or pounder is carved. Dude, like why can't you just say he is not? But the he's, right the CEO, person he's the CEO. He's the CEO of the company. My my bull case on Apple would have been Steve Jobs. My bear my bull case on Tesla has a largely to do with 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 um with Elon Musk. So why isn't it fair to say that? The bear case is the CEO. I do think if if um, if if uh, what's his name if Carp quits and you put a guy that did that just talks numbers, Palantir shoots up to your second. And, and, and completely wrong. What he's saying is completely wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna go into it uh, in a bit. Also. It, also, there are some situations uh, in life when people make, uh, you know, quick judgments about people. And I understand, uh, but it's not how investment should work. Uh, I agree. Alex Karp is an eccentric figure. You do need to study him to, to understand him uh, a little bit. But I have seen so many people who, you know, say, for example, that Trump is an idiot. I'm not saying he isn't or is, but I'm saying that they hear one line from him and then they decide anything he says is wrong. The same happened with Grant Cardone. I had a uh, Danish colleague who just looked at one video and he's like, yeah, he's a loud American. He doesn't know anything. And then two years later, this person was like uh, avidly studying his books and, you know, eating up all his seminars and, you know, really getting a lot of help from Grant Cardone. And that was a two year delay just because they made a flash judgment. So you really have to be careful with this as an investor uh, because 
that's where your investment opportunities are when you can you know see through the fog uh, and you know really analyze and see situations for what they are and not just go with what the mass uh, masses are saying He's got to go. i actually believe it's probably a 3x right away when car yeah, is gone if he goes I mean, one of the things that you have to consider is the, the level of uh, there are there are going to be CEOs that are cut above the rest where they can do things and they can pivot. They can see things around the corner that other people can't. And when you have a strong candidate, like I'll give you an example, Frank Slootman from Snowflake. While the product you can analyze as much as you want that Snowflake does this, Snowflake does that. When you have leadership that's, you know, has had multi-billion dollar success stories in the past, that just goes to show you that whatever magic that they had in the past, they can come and translate it and put that into effect. In this look, 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 I get it. And I'm, whereas, I'm, whereas, I'm, I'm, I'm so the, mad the, this turned into CARP because that's not the conversation. No, no but again, the it should be the conversation. Yeah, I'm, no, 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 I'm the leader of the company. No, he can't. Uh, Chris, you're talking no, about... No, but let him talk. Let, let, let him make, make his point. Let him make yeah. his point. Like, no, I've, I've, I've heard Chris a million times explain Frank Slootman and execution. I get it. I've heard it literally every podcast. I understand it. I've heard you guys every podcast awesome. talk about CARP. The problem is if we can for two seconds exclude the CEO, if we can be l not dogmatic enough to actually talk about the tech and the product, I don't think we can have a debate outside of Chris because you and Carlos have simply not done the level of research that's required to understand the tech and the product. You hate CARP I and you hate have. strategy. If that's the case then that's fine. We can disagree on that. But every time we have this conversation, you guys can't be like, well, Carp's an idiot. Because then- Why not? Because the Elon, leader matters. This is a great comment right here. Everyone hated Elon before- uh, the No, no, no. The leader so, matters of the Elon business. Forget about, I'm not saying hate. This has nothing to do- By the way, this is such a good point that, uh, you know, we all see Tesla, how it is today. I actually found uh, out about Elon Musk in 2013 and I've been following it and it's so true he got so much hate when he bought the gigafactory I remember all the or he started building it all the Wall Street analysts were laughing at him and they said that he's just going to go bankrupt why the heck is he building a battery factory and then you know a few years later people are like oh this was the most genius idea and then he you know went into China and I remember uh, all the short sellers saying that ah, this is never gonna work it's never going to be a factory. Uh, you know, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. And look where it is now. And Musk really was not this all beloved guy. Uh, he had a lot of people who seriously and still uh, don't like him. It's just because of his track record. You, you know, you think three times before you go against him. And there are still guys that don't think three times and <laughs> short the stock and, and stuff like this. But you know, everything is in the hindsight. So when you have a genius guy who does something different, uh, you know, you will not agree with him. But when you see the results, then, uh, you know, in the end, numbers talk, you know, bullshit walks, numbers talk, money talks. Hey, I'm public saying not like Elon man. until Tesla went to the moon. Dude, I don't, I'm not think talking so. about no, hating no, no, no. Elon. I'm no, talking no, about no. a business person. Who is a better business person? Elon is a better business person than Carp. Flat yeah. out, there's no debate with anybody. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Why? Hold on. How is that at all relevant to the argument I'm saying about AI? He can't give you your 10 X's if he's a bad business leader. He just can't yeah. do it. That's the no, guy that can't yeah. do it. Yeah. So, um, it, so, um, it, so dude, it, I invested in a little company. Okay, so Carp cannot give you 10 X's on your money because he's a bad uh, business leader. And if he would leave the stock with 3 X, and I'm telling you, only idiots think this way. So now I get to <laughs> explain myself. Let's begin. So. One of the first things about CARP uh, that a lot of people pick on is that he's not an engineer. So Elon Musk is an engineer, uh, you know, he started Tesla and he, you know, that company has a lot of engineering challenges. This is what I meant that he was the perfect uh, guy to have this role. Uh, CARP is a doctor of philosophy and and I believe that this is exactly what is needed to uh, make Palantir go right. Because look at what is happening to, for example, o OpenAI and how Musk is uh, calling for, actually it was today, Musk started calling for a stop in AI development for like six months until it can be regulated because he's too afraid that it has repercussions uh, for society. Uh, and why is this happening? I believe it is because the people who are uh, running the show with OpenAI, they are not doctors of philosophy and they don't have morals. Um, so 
look at the stuff that Carp thinks about. He gets engineers to do the work and then what is the things when you look at his interviews that he's thinking about? How do we preserve a Western democracy? How do we preserve a privacy? How do we not spy on our citizens? How do we make the program transparent so that if you know a data is needed about you, it's very clear from the program who looked at your data and why. And it's also it also makes it that if they don't have a clear enough reason to look at your data, then it's very easy to see that they transgressed and yeah, to, to roll it back. And the most important thing is that he has been super consistent. Uh, compare this with OpenAI who like their whole purpose was to have all the AI open to available for the general public and this would be a non-profit organization and then they ch turned into a for-profit organization and then they sold themselves uh, to Microsoft through a super complicated deal and basically Microsoft has access to all the patents of AI because they are a trusted partner so they were created uh, to prevent this very situation from happening and this flip-flop happened from 2016 to today. Whereas if you look at CARP, he started the company from we are going to help the Western governments while preserving privacy, transparency and he is the exact right guy because he's a philosopher, a doctor of philosophy and this is the kind of things that he thinks about and this is the kind of problems that I believe he got engineers to build into Palantir. And here are some other points that you might want to consider about CARP. Whatever he says, he's one of the greatest salespeople ever on this planet. He, I know he goes on every interview and he says like Palantir cannot sell, but I tell you, I want to hire him as a salesperson <laughs> because he is basically the almost uh, the only salesperson that Palantir had all the way until they had 700 million in annual sales. And he was the guy who was like flying all over the planet, closing all the governments and government agencies and companies. Uh, and he got a company up to 700 million in annual sales almost single-handedly. I tell you, if that is not a great salesperson, I don't know what is. And uh, if you know better, please send them my way. Uh, and this is the thing, he's not a nerdy engineer and he's a philosopher. And because of this, he's able to sit down with presidents, business leaders, you know, government leaders and talk about how AI can be safely implemented. I'm sure that when he had the meeting about uh, with the CDC and the NHS about how to roll out the COVID vaccines, he didn't go there and say like, you know, you use this coding language and then the code goes like this because it's over people's heads. What he did is, look, we have a solution we can implement in three weeks and it's going to preserve privacy. It's going to be transparent. People can follow back what has happened. And this is why this thing works. And that's because of him. Here's another thing that you need to think about Alex Cobb. He can clearly uh, attract talent for 20 plus years in the field. If you, uh, you know, go around and look around, it's very easy or it used to be very easy to get hired uh, for Apple, for Meta or, you know, get a, a job as a software engineer. But at Palantir, they're notoriously hard to get a job at because they are only hiring uh, the best people and they can, uh, you know, retain this talent. And this is a very, very a strong point in the company. Then here's another thing. Carp clearly knows the market that the company is in because they have been working on certain products like Foundry years and years before uh, they were needed. And this is again where you have a different thinking that in the end turns out to be genius. Because if a guy would come to me and say, look, we're going to spend three years working on this product and we think it's needed in the market, but we need to do all the three years of work to find out if it's, if this product is needed. Uh, nobody would approve this because you know everybody's into this minimum viable product and you know like do the least minimum and you know then try to scale it and then work on it and they have a complete different thinking and they go into this maximum viable product uh, and they fully develop products and they have done it multiple times so the fact that they have done it multiple times it means that CARP has a really, really deep understanding of the field, what is out on the market and what is needed. And this is, this is something that the company is greatly benefiting from and is going to super benefit uh, in the future. 
And here's the most important thing of all. He has been the CEO of this company for 20 plus years. And in this year, the company has become a unicorn company. They have shown a clear product market fit. They have no debt and they have 2.5 uh, plus billion dollars in cash on the balance sheet. So does this look like a badly run company to you? And how many people do you know that have done better? So this is why I think that anybody who wants carp out of Palantir is an idiot and they have not studied the company enough. And I think that he's a great CEO and he is part of the reason why I'm invested into uh, Palantir. And this is my two cents about this subject. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you want to su help support the channel, you can check out the Patreon link, which is in the description box below. For five bucks a month, you get direct access to me, to some exclusive contact, and my Palantir and Tesla and other stocks uh, coming soon valuations. Uh, so it's lots of cool stuff. So it would make me happy if you checked it out. And I'll see you in the next video otherwise. Ciao, ciao.